The Insider's Guide to Energy Hydrogen miniseries is brought to you by the Hydrogen Dialogue Summit and Expo, taking place December 6th and 7th at Nuremberg Exhibition Center. This edition of the Insider's Guide to Energy Hydrogen miniseries is brought to you by FORS, a leading international strategy and management consultancy with focus on the entire trading value chain. Welcome to Insider's Guide to Energy Hydrogen miniseries. Here I am, Chris Sass, with Roman Conner. Roman, welcome back to the program. What are we going to talk about today? Chris, very warm welcome again from my side. Today, we have a very special guest. I'm honored, we are honored, to welcome Ms. Salazar Mejia, the ambassador of Colombia to Germany. Welcome, ambassador. Thank you so much, uh, Chris and Roman, for this uh, great opportunity to speak uh, to you and to your audience. So we are very, thank you, Ambassador, we are very curious to learn more about Colombia and Colombia's transition at the moment from fossil fuels to hydrogen and, 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 and to renewables in general. Ambassador, please, what can you tell us about this transition at the moment in Colombia? Yeah, thank you so much. That's a huge, huge uh, transition. Colombia is changing um, the economic model from an uh, extractive economy to one based um, not only in production, but in uh, knowledge and sustainability. This sounds uh, very simple, but it's um, very um, ambitious and it's very complicated. And it's, this needs uh, a lot of efforts that I am very happy um, to discuss with you today. So, what? So, I guess that y you you have a plan in Colombia how to make this transition, how to get away from fossil fuels. Can you tell us a bit more about how? What are the cornerstones of this plan, and what have you achieved, and what do you plan to achieve? Yeah, the cornerstone is um, uh, just uh, energy transition roadmap together with a um, hydrogen roadmap, roadmap and then a roadmap for offshore uh, wind energy. This has been, uh, of course, done uh, with the government, not uh, only with the ministries and institutions, but with the people. And um, in this Just Energy Transition Roadmap, we had between September 2022 and April 2023, we brought together uh, more than 2,000 uh, people from the communities, from the academia, from the union, trade unions, entrepreneurs, of course, the companies and civil society organizations to make sure that uh, we are implementing public policies for the transformation needed in the country, redefining of all uh, economic, ecological, and social structures, but uh, more important to make sure that uh, from this energy transition, um, the marginalized communities are going to benefit. Because if you see the current um, economic model of Colombia, where we have the natural resources, we, should be very rich regions with a lot of um, wealth, and it is not. So that's why we are changing this uh, economic model. It sounds like uh, the change comes from a few controlling interests to, you said, thousands of people involved in this process. So is this more of a democratization of energy? Are you trying to just share the wealth of the resource with your people? Or is it more getting the people involved in the direction that the country is taking and supporting the direction? It is both. And this is a very, very good question, uh, Chris. Democratizing the energy uh, means that uh, we need to first understand what do people in the territories uh, need? Why? What are they going to accept as well in this uh, new model? And, of course, we want to uh, bring them as part of the economic model as actors, not only as uh, spectators. So this is both. Uh, the, we are promoting uh, energy communities so that the, there's ownership of the energy production 
as well as self-sufficiency, and that this uh, surplus in energy may, means additional resources for those families and communities. But these additional resources as well should uh, um, encourage uh, companies to do, of course, more money and engage with the communities and with their needs. Ambassador, that is a very, very interesting point. I like it. So with the transition, you also have a transition in the society redistributing wealth and making a lot more people participate in the benefits of, of, of renewables, right? Yes, that's correct. Does, does that impact your your ability to get private sector money involved? So are the, the foreign nationals and the companies that traditionally invest in energy less excited as they have to share the profits and resources with the people of Colombia? No, actually, they are more excited than before because uh, we realized uh, that uh, in some regions um, there were some barriers um, with the communities that uh, there was mistrust uh, towards the investors. And that's exactly what uh, we are tackling. There's going to be and there's more trust in what does the investor willing to accomplish and investors indeed i can mention i'm not going to mention names but many german companies they want to engage in social stable regions because these are businesses that requires stability and long-term um, efforts and investment so uh, investors are very much uh, uh, happy and eager to partner in Colombia with uh, with us because uh, uh, democratizing energy means more, more stability for their businesses. That is, that is interesting. So since this is a podcast about hydrogen, Ambassador, could you please give us a brief overview? What is the current status of the production of green hydrogen and an outlook, what the potential is of that production of green hydrogen in Colombia? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, in in fact, um, w uh, the change that implies facing uh, out uh, coal uh, mean is meaning uh, to face out our coal exports because uh, um, we uh, don't uh, we mostly export uh, coal and uh, we want to replace uh, those exports for hydrogen export part of it of course for our reindustrialization but the rest would be around 12 billion us dollar what do we have now besides the just energy transition roadmap that i mentioned we have a hydrogen roadmap and we have a roadmap for offshore wind energy that was published uh, from our ministry of energy with support with the world bank and identifies that Colombia has a high wind potential uh, in the Caribbean part uh, of around 50 gigawatts. So um, starting from your question, what do we have? Uh, very, very impressive, uh, huge uh, potential. But uh, we have pilot projects um, that I'm not going to refer to. They are small. But we have two big, uh, bigger projects with um, the refineries of uh, Ecopetrol, both in Cartagena and in Barranca Bermeja. So this uh, oil company has decided to decarbonize and um, uh, uh, use and uh, transform the gray hydrogen that uh, is in these refineries to green hydrogen. We are talking about... Uh, projects of uh, around 300 uh, uh, megawatts. And mm -hmm. um, the idea is that um, we will have 2.5 additional gigawatts that will come in operation in the next three years, where we have the capacity, uh, the installed capacities onshore in La, in La Guajira, in the northern part. And there we will be um, producing uh, more hydrogen. We have now, as I mentioned, the hydrogen strategy. We have joined the Regional Certificate Initiative for Hydrogen, and we are working on our national certificate. And besides that, we are working, of course, on the regulatory framework that we have for renewables so that we can 
um, adapt it and uh, to have it uh, ready as well for hydrogen. Ambassador, what makes Colombia so well positioned with respect to the production of and to transportation of green hydrogen? Thank you so much for, for this question. So um, I first want to say that um, uh, the Colombia is um, one of the countries with the biggest uh, potential for renewables. Um, although we have um, like almost 70% of hydroelectric electric, and the non-conventional sources of renewable energy are just around two, 3%, Colombia is one of the countries with most water resources worldwide and that we need for the hydrogen economy. Water is uh, really uh, important and we have an, a, a really a very good combination of abundant resources and excellent potential for installing uh, solar and wind farms that we are already having. So uh, for the production and export of uh, energy sources like uh, hydrogen, Colombia has uh, uh, very good conditions. I, I want to mention that uh, according to the roadmap of, for offshore wind energy that was published by, the, by our ministry with the World Bank um, last year, and there is a high wind potential um, in, Colum in the northern part of Colombia, the Caribbean coast, of around 50 gigawatt. So uh, having... All this potential sun, wind, and uh, very good uh, human resources, because that's important as well, and we have that young people and trained people. Uh, we are working very hard on instruments to accelerate the adoption of unconventional energies through technologies and, and uh, infrastructures that boost the development of it, this huge potential. And that's very important. We are reducing tariffs, of course, we are taking all the loss that we are having for renewables and adapting it for the hydrogen economy. And, um, and we have the decision and the decision has already been taken and we are going, we are following that. And we have two big projects. I don't know if you want me to comment on that. Please, by all means. So uh, there are um, around 15 projects, uh, small scale, of course, and, uh, and pilot projects on and hydrogen, but two, like, focus, very um, medium projects that we have. And these projects are in the northern part of the country, uh, in La Guajira, where there's the biggest uh, potential, one of the biggest in the world, uh, according to Irina. And in these two projects are coming from our national oil company, Ecopetrol. And Ecopetrol decided to decarbonize uh, this industrial oil production. And the two projects are in Cartagena and in Barranca Bermeja. Those are converting uh, gray hydrogen into green hydrogen. And this, they are around 300 um, megawatt. And maybe I should mention price because that's a, no, another important thing in the hydrogen economy. According to Irina, by 2050, Colombia is going to be, be able to offer the fourth cheapest production cost of green hydrogen after China, Chile, and Morocco. And we are going to be ahead of Australia and uh, Indonesia. So where, Ambassador, where do you see this, this potential green hydrogen that you are going to produce in Colombia, where do you see this, this go? Where, what are the, the target markets you envision? So those markets are connected to technology transfer. So certainly Colombia is um, working with partners with technology because and uh, that I are willing to share with that uh, knowledge and to combine an ecosystem that is virtually and mutually interesting, profitable, and uh, useful for, for, for both parties. Um, we, I'm speaking exactly about one country where I'm posted is Germany. And this is, um, we are working very hard with the, not only with the government, but with the science and uh, with, um, the in industry here. The industry in Germany is going to demand, uh, is demanding huge amounts of energy and clean energy. 
and um, certainly there are discussions and we are trying to put the ecosystem both in Colombia and in Germany at the same level so that we can make businesses. So there's, uh, these are, for us, it is very important that the countries we are partnering with are very ambitious uh, environmentally, are very committed to, to social redistribution of the supply chain and the part of the supply chain, because I forgot to mention the most important thing, Colombia has very important critical minerals for the energy transition, meaning rare earth, heavy and not very heavy, <laughs> I forgot in English the name, uh, and, um, and these earth, nickel and other uh, mineral resources, we are going to share in uh, supply chains with partners like Germany, for example, with technology and with science. And we have signed several instruments for uh, with the uh, Fraunhofer Institute and with other science associations to make sure that not only the big industry as well, the big uh, companies of Germany we are talking to, but the small and medium enterprises in both sides of the Atlantic profit from this just energy transition. Wow, that, that was a lot. Uh, so you, you told us about the minerals you have, uh, the folks, some relationship that you have with Germany. I guess you, you mentioned earlier in the interview that that Colombia is blessed with a, a number of young, talented people. Um, how do you go, you know, you work with somewhere like Germany where they've got quite a bit of innovation and technology. How are you getting that from Germany to being boots on the ground and Colombian folks in Colombia with the skill set needed to grow this industry? Yeah, that's an excellent question. We started already with something called CERFER. This is a German Colombian um, uh, is, uh, institution that, uh, not institution, maybe is a um, training center. And this training center um, is um, connected to the German Colombian Chamber of Commerce to the um, Agency for Air, uh, Energy in Germany, DINA, and both governments, and is located in the innovation center of Ecopetrol, this big company that I mentioned at the beginning, because there, in this innovation center, we want to boost the exchange of uh, technologies so that we can uh, partner there with and train our young people. There's a lot of people that are coming out of the call facing out. And these people, we need to retrain and create uh, green jobs for these people that are uh, working uh, now in, a, in, a, in the old uh, model that I mentioned, and they are entering into this new, new model. And besides that, we have here in the Colombian diaspora, uh, which is the second largest diaspora of Latin America in Germany after Brazil, we have um, a lot of uh, scientists working in uh, energy transition in many German institutes, and they are connected uh, with us in this ecosystem to make sure that uh, from both sides, we can tune what we want to accomplish regarding uh, hydrogen uh, exports and imports in a very new uh, dynamic, not exporting one, uh, um, the exchange of one technology for the other or the exchange for one research for another. No, we are going to have uh, all transitions that are necessary, including labor and productive transition in our territories. That, I didn't know that, that Germany had the second largest Colombian diaspora in the world. Interesting. Besides knowledge transfer or the exchange of knowledge, this transition, this very ambitious plan of yours requires a lot of money. Where... Yeah is the money coming from? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the big, big question in the world now. Where is the money coming from? And this, uh, and the money is coming from our own, of course, our own resources, part of it. And um, the money is coming from the Colombian big companies like uh, Ecopetrol, like uh, Grupo Energia Bogotá, Promigas, these energy companies that are um, they are not only in Colombia, they are in the whole region uh, making the, 
business and the transition with, with gas, with oil, with all these energy carriers, and they are committed to go green. And uh, the money comes from their investors as well because they are big companies. And the rest of the money um, uh, is coming from the multilateral banking, of course. And uh, this multilateral banking is trusting Colombia because we are developing projects that are going to become financing and are becoming already financing uh, in the transport sector, in the ports, for example, in infrastructure. We have already our pipeline of um, uh, yeah around 10 billion uh, US dollars for investments to expand infrastructure. And this is already financed. But the rest, of course, the, we are asking for uh, innovative ways of uh, becoming financing. And this is going to be connect connected as well to green financing in the world. We have asked Germany and they did so to support us to get a just energy transition partnership within the G7, because if Colombia faces out this coal, this is going to impact very positively the Paris Agreement. So the, the money will come as well from uh, green climate financing. So we are making all the efforts and proposals and the numbers to make sure that there's um, enough uh, money for, for this transition that is going to benefit not only Colombia, but uh, certainly the other countries that are going to, to, like Germany, to profit from our exports of green hydrogen, among others, yeah. You mentioned in your answer uh, the infrastructure required. So you talked about significant amount of resource and money, getting some credit for getting off of coal, perhaps. Um, the port infrastructure is an important part of this plan. Um, what's happening either regulatory or building-wise within Colombia to enable the size and scale of a port that you would need to export to, let's say, Europe? Yeah, that's uh, very important. And in fact, uh, our ports in uh, Barranquilla, Cartagena, and the uh, smaller ones, uh, the new ones uh, that are in, uh, in La Guajira, in the northern part, they are adapting their infrastructure. And Colombia has a big uh, infrastructure, as I mentioned, uh, pipeline uh, with air, not only uh, Ports, airport, rail network, ports, and fluvial um, um, ways, so that we are offering public private partnership uh, models that are very interesting for, for investors. And our objective is that um, we can have uh, the greatest freight potential for, for this economy that is going to be equi equivalent of uh, 7.6 billion for expansion, modernization, and structural improvements of the ports of Buenaventura in the Pacific coast. Colombia has Pacific and Atlantic oceans. That's unique in the world. Barranquilla and Tumaco along to the um, construction of an alternative ca uh, canal in Cartagena. And Cartagena has won an award. It's one of the most innovative ports uh, uh, worldwide. So um, this, is, this is moving forward. Now, you, you mentioned in this answer, you just said you have ports on the Pacific coast and on the Atlantic coast. Most of this interview, we've been focused on your, your relationship with Germany. Um, what other aspirational or countries are you hoping to work with moving forward? We are already working and there are many, many discussions that our ministers and our president has been having with countries in Asia. And of course, the U.S. is our uh, big partner as well in U.S. and Canada. So we are diversifying, but certainly uh, in Europe, Germany is one of the countries that is very important for this economy. There are others, of course, uh, in a, as well as, for example, one of the countries that is going to have the COP. It's a country that is very much interested in and is uh, uh, investing in Colombia in renewables. There's many other countries, but I'm the ambassador to Germany, so I prefer to stay with uh, Germany. Makes sense. 
The, the the last kind of question that that I might bring to this conversation is, you know, not to paint like a Pollyanna picture that everything's all rosy. What are some of the challenges and opportunities moving forward in front of you to make this work? Yeah, the cha- certainly uh, big challenges is the, um, the licensing. Of course, there are licensing permits, and uh, we need to make more modern our regulation. Uh, strategies and uh, our norms. The certification is as well a challenge, of course, because uh, we need to make sure that we certify really things that are really green and not that we are talking about uh, green hydrogen when it is it is not. And from a social point of view, um, of course, we need to offer the communities uh, economic models with the companies that are both uh, very, very satisfying for the investors but also for the community so that they go in a virtuous ecosystem to make a lot of wealth that is going to be interested, is interesting for for both uh, communities and companies. So the enabling scenarios uh, need to be perfect and the value chains need to be as well very, very, very good. And uh, we have all the conditions and we we are working uh, on that. I forgot to mention something that is important, that is uh, electricity, you know, and how, because if you think of Colombia, you might think that we have uh, rails and all this and still not. So we are investing a lot in what uh, is the public uh, transportation with buses. Colombia has the eighth largest electric, electric bus fleet today. So this is part of the transition as well, the electric part. And uh, our sales in vehicles have multiplied by three between 2021 and 2022. So part of the decarbonization is uh, very, very hard in the industry and the transport sectors where we are investing a lot of of, um, money and doing a lot of public policies because these two contribute uh, as well to to emissions. And then this we we are tackling Uh, and making a lot of businesses in these two sectors. Ambassador, one question that comes to mind as we've been speaking is, you know, policy and regulation help this. Are there incentives and things like that being put in place to help facilitate this vision? Yes, there's a framework of renewables in general, and for hydrogen, we are working on much more. But uh, this includes taxing incentives the, um, in the reduction of excess uh, of uh, 50% of income tax of the total investment made in, uh, I think, uh, 15 uh, years, and accelerated depreciation of assets in three years. In general, we have uh, we are working. Uh, we have a robust um, and enabling regulatory framework um, for viable renewables, and that can pro- that provide investors already confidence to do business in Colombia. And besides that, of course, we are going into more. Uh, detail regarding the new hydrogen economy. This we are still uh, in work, but we are now as um, facing uh, challenges that we are trying to to resolve uh, regarding the socializing to operate and uh, to make sure that the the models of uh, economy that we offer so that the transition will be evenly distributed. This is something that is in, in, in work. But in general, it's good that you asked me this question about the regulatory framework because we have already a very good enabled framework for renewables in general. That that was that is really interesting. So a lot of things happen in Colombia. You have very much potential, very ambitious plans. It was an honor having you here today, Ambassador, providing us an insight into this potential, into the plans. I personally hope that all of these plans come to fruition. Uh, I not only for Germany but also for for, for the world. Um, if you want to meet with the ambassador and learn more about this, the, the these plans the tr- of the transition to green hydrogen, please come to the Hydrogen Dialogue 2023 Summit and Expo on December 6th and 7th in Nuremberg. It was a pleasure having you here, Ambassador. 
It was my pleasure, and I thank you so much, uh, Roman and Chris, for this uh, very interesting uh, conversation. And I will be very glad to meet uh, um, companies and people in uh, Nuremberg for the hydrogen dialogue and make sure that I can show the numbers, nice numbers about green hydrogen in Colombia um, with cost of less than 1.5 US dollar per kilogram by 2050 and among other interesting issues. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's been an amazing conversation for our audience. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. We're trying to get you exposed to as much information as you can about hydrogen and green hydrogen from all over the world. Uh, this is a unique opportunity to hear an ambassador speak. Uh, your opportunity to meet even at a trade show coming up just around the world or dialogues at a conference. So it should be a great opportunity. And for our audience, thank you again for listening. We'll see you again next time on the Insider's Guide to Energy Hydrogen mini series. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.